Mike the Ref Maloney, Big Bad Boris on the call here tonight. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let the Super Kick Party! Yeah, pay the money for that. No one. And of course, you're gonna get the coffins. <laughs> Yo, 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 and away we go. Happy Saturday night to one and all here. Welcome to the AEW Collision Sidecast here on the Mike Drift Twitch channel. Uh, plans are to simulcast on the Backbreaker video channel, but stay tuned on that. Want to make sure I can do everything before I do it. Well, yeah, good to see everybody here tonight. Uh, we're we're going to have some fun here tonight. Uh it's been a couple matches that are a little confusing to me, but still not uh, still not the worst. After all the crap that uh, Christopher Daniels has put up with the, with the Elite, uh, he is getting a TNT Championship match against uh, Jack Perry tonight. We got... Uh, I don't know how we're going to do that, but that's okay. Uh... Private Party and Commander are actually going to get a shot at actually wrestling tonight. If you guys weren't here on uh, Wednesday, uh, the Backpool Combat Club just said, uh, nope, you're not working tonight. To these guys, roughly uh, got the mop floor mopped up with them. Uh, that was prior to Pox promo. So, uh, As well, we are getting uh, the return of Yuka Sakazaki. Is going to be an action here tonight. Uh, I'll be honest, I should have actually looked at the card while I was here. So, but it's always great to see everybody here. So let's see your library card. Here we go. Okay, Yuka Sakazaki versus Serena D, which was a rivalry that happened prior to Sakazaki's injury. They're literally just fast tracking us right back into that. Scenario here. Queen Almanada, after her great showing against Mariah May, is taking on Robin Renegade. Wheeler Yuta versus Anthony Wright. Now, this is going to be interesting because this is Wheeler's first appearance since uh, the whole thing at All Out. So, we're actually, we don't know where uh, Wheeler really stands after seeing everything happen the way that it did. So... That'll be interesting to see how that one piles up. We got the Bang Bang Gang against the Cage of Agony in uh, trios action tonight. So it's nice to see an actual trios team actually working as a trio on a trio show. Uh, let's see now. We got Briscoe, O'Reilly, and Hologram versus the Beast Mortos of the Premier Athletes. Well, two-thirds of them, at least. Uh, you don't get uh, Josh Woods in action tonight, so. And then our main event. Just like I mentioned in the Go Live notification, we are getting the... Uh, we're getting probably the two, be two best three-letter teams that are going right now in GYV versus FTR in our main event here tonight, so. Buckle up. That one's going to be a lot of fun. And once again, it's always a lot of fun having all of you here uh, each and every week here. Uh, Wednesday was a lot of fun. Like, between the wrestling and the WWE 2K, we had such an amazing stream on Wednesday. Uh, the 2K stream, I think we had about as perfect of a card as we're ever going to get. With everything just lighting up absolutely perfectly. And then... Uh, yeah, the, the main card setting up for Grand Slam here in just a couple weeks. That 25th card is going to be a lot of fun, and that's, yeah, that's going to be a blast, to say the least. But yeah, we got about a minute till showtime here. Once again, just everybody, thank you for stopping by here. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, uh, just throw us a follow. If you're watching on the old, uh, on the old YouTube Hit the like button, hit subscribe. Every little bit helps us out here, so. 
Just going to hit one button here as we go. There we go. So if you guys have watched previous collisions, I've been having a bit of a problem with uh, my TV interaction and I haven't had a chance to talk to Roku about it yet. So tonight I'm actually going to try out the online uh, feature with the computer. So if I'm looking a little off camera this way this time, that's why, rather than looking at you guys directly in the chat. I do have my camera right here with my text, so I won't be able to see any comments that come in here tonight, so. But yeah, AEW in a way, I, I know I've heard some people say that AEW's in a bit of a slump lately in terms of booking. I, I wouldn't be too surprised about that as they fire everything up right now. Oh, this is going to be a lot better for me here tonight, so. What the hell is Perry doing? Did he just drop a beer can? It seems sort of perfect that we're at the Nutter Center. So he's speeding, he dropped a beer can. It looked like he was having a piece of vodka there as he was, uh... All right, don't fool around right into the TNT title match. I like that. We'll have to see what kind of uh, sync up we have tonight, too. Perry, Perry's looking like he's a little concerned, baby. Scapegoat Bus Company. I, I, I haven't had a chance to see this. But yeah, as we get started, everybody, once again, thank you for stopping by here tonight. I truly do appreciate it. Oh, so now they've made it official that they're doing Hook and Roderick at Grand Slab. So, Grand Slab's almost fixed. Daniels has been wanting to wrestle for so long. Oh, Perry's going to have a lot of fun with this one, I think, tonight. I, I love how, you know, we talk about wins and losses mattering. No one on Retro goes to Gorp. Absolutely. Shout out to the uh, Retro Hangover podcast. Just like the long sleeves tonight, you know, things are going here. So how you doing tonight, sir? Hope you're doing well. So I actually am trying the, uh, I, I might be a little closer to lots of studying. Eh? Studying is important. You don't want to end up being a, a variety streamer on Twitch every five days a week like me here. Come on now. Yes, I'm going to. But yeah, we were talking about how I was having so much problems with the. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Fair enough, my friend. 
No, we were talking about my troubles with the uh, Roku app and watching TSN online. We're going to try the website tonight and see if it works any better. Right now, they're just showing the splash for uh, GYV and FTR. Perry's so proud of himself here all the time. Uh, Nigel's in fine form here tonight. But I, I wonder how many people in this crowd and how many people, the younger people at AEW, uh, know about Christopher Daniels and everything that he's done. Like, you know, they don't have a whole lot of footage on Daniels to begin with because, well, I'll guarantee you that TNA library ain't coming out much. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, Daniels is one of the original tag team champions here at AEW. A lot of people forget that. That, uh, SCU was the original tag champ here. I don't know whether this is making Perry look strong or Daniels look like a chump. But I'm pretty sure we got four-fifths of our card for Grand Slab already figured out now that they announced Hook versus Roderick Strong coming up uh, in two weeks' time. Do. Oh, uh, nice little flatliner. I don't, have you guys got a chance to see Christopher Daniels' comic book? I wish I could find it. I picked up a copy right before the pandemic. He was here at Edmonton. This is a sneaky good card tonight. Just looking it up, up and down the lineup. I don't know how Aminata and uh, Robin Renegade's going to be. Aminata, a wrestler's card. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. I, I do wonder if uh, Private Party and... Uh, Commander are going to be able to actually get their match in tonight. Because they say they're in action. So, did they get the rematch? Of the Could you imagine Daniels weighed this card, to, this match tonight? It just automatically having a rematch on Tuesday or next Wednesday, just fixing it up. Never mind. Hey, Snow Penguin, how you doing tonight? Seven stream streak. You're just here all the time. I appreciate you a lot, my friend. I'm always glad to have people popping in here. Oh, always great to see everybody here. So it's starting to rain. Yeah, it's been raining off and on here uh, all day today, which I don't mind being uh, a gentleman that uh, runs car washes. 
I like a little more quieter weekend here. Yeah, to be perfectly honest, it's going to be a little... Uh oh Wouldn't you at least want to grab your jacket before you leave? I love how Jack is trying to pull donuts and he just can't. Oh, we're going to get more just dis Yeah, I don't know what's... I wonder what's going to happen with the trios titles now. Are they just going to say to hell with it? He's probably perfectly fine. Just one sec here, still peg. We got a very important interview going on right now. We're up. Uh, Generic promo 101. Forgot his boots on top of it, though. Uh, no, tonight we're watching AEW Collision on uh, whether it be TSN Plus or TNT in the states fight plus around the world and then after we're done tonight we're going to uh head into uh, wwe 2k my gm mode which is gonna be a very interesting card tonight because there's some stuff i want to do but there's some stuff that people have demanded they wanted and i made a mistake with uh one of the things that i what are the guarantees I made that I should have changed? What's next for the Shaw Stopper? I have to see what he's got for stamina. I might give him the week off here. I'm going to try and see if I can push this Argus feud on. Because right now, Argus has a feud with stacks, but if I can break that off... Oh yeah, there's multiple feuds going on right now. Rollins Dragunov, we're probably not going to see either one of those in action tonight. Just because I want to flip one of them from a specialist to something to make that, make that matchup mean a little bit more overall. And then once we flip that, then we can do whatever we need to here. Build Shaw with more. Maybe. We'll have to see how we're going to fill things up here because this week, honestly, after the PLE, is a bit of a non week altogether.
like in most cases yeah like we are gonna have to build some things up but i looked at the stamina after i got off stream and yeah it's a little rough for a lot of our guys What are those pants on Josh Woods? Is he is he going golfing this weekend? Hologram Osprey Ricochet. Oh my goodness. Let's throw uh Command Air in there. Well, they aren't quite smart in Ohio, to be to be frank. Oh, uh, Zodiac Hertz Syndicate is already trademarked. It's not trademarked to AEW, though. It's trademarked to the company that runs, uh, that runs, uh, MVPs. Basically, MVP owns the Hertz Syndicate trademarked. So, which I think is six of one, half a dozen the other when it comes to AEW. Because all, all the uh, merch sales are going to go through Pro Wrestling Tees anyway, so. Oh, and uh, yeah, th I, I thank Stream Elements for reminding us here. Uh, up until, like, we, we've talked about the sub deal that we have going on right now. From now until Tuesday, uh, every 300 bits that you you donate to the channel, Twitch will throw in some bonus, some bonus uh, little candy as well. So they'll throw some of their own bits in there. So for those that can't sub and you still want to help, Three, 300 bits is about $3, so. So, sorry, let, let's get off the uh, plugging aspect. Let's get back to the. <sighs> Uh-oh. I'll just leave that there, but let's get back to this match here. And hasn't it been a nice treat to see how well Kyle O'Reilly and and Mark Briscoe have worked well together. Because Mark Briscoe, he like, uh, while he said he would never do a tag team again, he's not against trios. He said the only tag team he will ever work with is his brother, and now that his brother's passed, Oh, I, I love that. That's Kung Pao Kung Fu. But yeah, it's so nice to see Kyle O'Reilly working together with Mark the way he is. Like, you would think if he didn't have the Undisputed Kingdom with him, like, he had a bit of a personality, but Brisk Briscoe's really brought it out in him. As much as you want to say a premier athlete, the premier athletes are, Motos is literally a beast. Uh oh. Yeah, Mortos just said, I don't care how good you are, hologram. You are toast.
Took a lot of time more than he should have there. Feed knees are to, La to Lashley first. I, I don't think that'd be a bad choice. That is hilarious. The fact that hologram's so small that he's able to flip through that uh, basically that Spanish fly power slam reverse whatever you want to call it even though it's not hit perfectly. Well, Mortos just got taken out. Oh, here we go. Like 16 on one. I love it. Uh, picture... A legit picture in picture. I'm impressed. But now, how would you bring the Hurt Syndicate into AEW? That's a good question I have for you. If you're watching and you're and you're insisting on making sure that the Hurt, Hurt Syndicate makes it into uh, AEW, I'd almost be at the position here where I'd. I'd almost say that I'd want them to be. If you're not gonna have Omega take out the, uh, take out the elite, maybe work with. Work with the Hurt Syndicate a little bit, even if it is a higher gun scenario. I don't know. I'd have to get a little bit more. I'd have to put a little bit more thinking behind it, but having there. Having the Hurt Syndicate here would actually be a real good boost to not only the tag division, but the trios division. But after I've been watching everything that's been going on here for the last little while, can we just all agree that the biggest issue when it comes to tag team wrestling, when it comes to women's wrestling right now, is simply booking? Because there are so many good wrestlers here in every company. Like, I'll be perfectly honest. I'm a little bit scared of how healthy is MVP. We're going to find out because the next blood sport, he's actually going in there. If I do remember, do remember properly. Who's he taking on? Uh, he's taking on Josh. Uh, Josh Barnett, sorry. It's going to be Josh Barnett and uh, an MVP in a, in, a, in the uh, Bloodsport arena. So we'll, we'll have to see how that works out. But yeah, it all depends on health. It all depends on how things are going, going style-wise. The Hurt Syndicate would be a hell of a get, but it's also how you utilize them, right? As we're just getting back from picture to picture again. And of course, O'Reilly's taking the heat from everyone. That's a nice reversal there. You notice that AEW Fight Forever hasn't had a season pass in a while? I really wonder if they're actually going to get a fifth season. I could see them getting one big roster update. With a lot of the new people that have come in here. Like, you can't tell me that you wouldn't sell a few extra copies if you added Mariah May to the uh, the equation here. Go.
God, Morto. I've always wondered with Morto there in his mask, should that be illegal? Nice slam out of the corner. They're not letting Hologram lose. That's sort of obvious here. And a destroyer. They should pull an NFL 2K25 and release the game for 20 bucks. I wouldn't mind that. And we were actually talking about it on uh, Wednesday with uh, Veda Scott having a great idea. Do a kart racer. Honestly, I'd love to see a crush hour with AEW. Yeah, Jack Perry's bus. You got the uh, Lamborghinis for the box. Love a hologram just boom right through the middle there. And Mortos just says, hey, anything you can do, I can do better, even though I'm double your size. Referee takes the chair away. Oh, even worse, Sterling does. Bed check. No way. All right, well, let's just use Sterling as the chair this time. It wasn't illegal. Sterling files lawsuits on Monday mornings just with his morning coffee. Nice little technical pin. Crowd loves it. Holograms a hero. Even though we haven't heard from him yet. You notice every time Hologram works, he has that Mexican referee with him. Makes a lot of sense. All right, well, that's a unique way of doing it. Hey, Mitchie. O'Reilly, I want you. He sounds just like Hogan there. I'm not pray. I will praise your basketballs, your volleyballs, your baseballs, your softballs, and your footballs. Because apparently the uh, Alouettes can't do much with them right now. Wow. They actually got a swear word out here. I like this. So we got WWE 2012. All right. I like the fact they're using CML all the way like this. I like Renee's answer. Oh my God. What's with, what's with the bags over people's heads here? That didn't break well. Must not have been real glass.
You know, you notice Renee's still holding the microphone instead? As we head to the commercial break here. No, uh, a lot of things happened at the uh, CML show uh, on Friday. Uh, Zussi, the former partner of Stephanie Vakur, uh, defeated Willow Nightingale for the uh, CML women's title. Or the Reina's Championship, as they would call it. So, that title's long gone right now. I, I think it makes sense now why they didn't put the title along the line in that Chicago street fight at All Out. Because Statlander, I don't know if she's the... Uh, she's supposed to be the heel, and Zeusy's supposed to be the heel as well. So, uh, a heel-heel match in Mexico, you know... They might start pulling knives or something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, the main event was straight out of 2013-2012. Chris Jericho and, and Mystico, the former Sin Cara, Who used to be Mystico before that, but I, I digress here. But, uh, yeah, we're finally getting Jericho and Orange once again. Wondered how long it would take for them to start uh, pulling out feuds that were involving uh, stuff during the pandemic, right? Starting to go back to that well a little bit too much. But what do you... So right now we are... Th we're essentially three and a half months away from the end of the year. What are you guys looking forward to the most in terms of wrestling-wise? Hell, let's go life-wise either, either way. It will be a very fun week, uh, the last week of the month here, because, well, unfortunately, I'm turning 46 here at the end of the month here, but Cody moving away from the bloodline. I hope so. I don't, honestly, I don't think that's going to happen. Zodiac. Right now, they got that tag match set up for Bad Blood that they announced last night. Yeah, who am I kidding? I am, exactly. Uh, RK Shuttlesworth bound for glory. Yeah, that that looks like it's going to be shaping up at the sign special here. And bound for glory every year has really turned into uh, a very special event. I am a little worried, though. I'll be perfectly honest. I am a little bit worried. Uh, if you guys didn't get a chance, I was uh, hanging out in the chat for uh, the OLE uh, wrap up for. for uh, the pay-per-view last night. And usually the hallmark for a for TNA slash Impact for the last few years has been the women's division. But you look how Jordan Grace has been booked right now. Basically, I called her Roman Jordan just because it nicely rhymes. Oh, Mina. <laughs> oh, yeah, Scorpio's just been bad with the injury bug. I love the guy in the crowd. Everybody wants Mina. Sometimes you can play with the stereotypes rather well.
you can't just yeah it's gonna be fun watching her here but i can tell you what i'm not looking forward to that new smack all right i'm gonna throw it out here right now yes i will completely agree for old farts like you and me and a lot of us older people she uh That music isn't for us, but I'm going to give it a few weeks. If you could tell in a few weeks that that's recognizable as SmackDown music, like when you hear that music, you think of SmackDown, that's when I will say whether it's a good, good song or not. And yeah, that logo is confusing as all hell, but once again, we're old. They're booking Jordan like a beast, but she should be tearing through the NXT roster anyways, including Roxanne. Well, Here's the problem. And we were talking about this last night on the OLE uh, stream. Who do they beat? Who does... Who does... Who finally beats Jordan Grace? I don't know if you have anybody pin her. I think she ends up... I think she ends up in a multi-person match and not eating the pin. And somebody else just steals the title that way. I don't know if you can book it any other way right now. Have her first NXT feud be the per person that distracts Jordan from getting breaking up the cover. But I don't see any way that you can actually get Jordan to lose to anybody. Nobody on the roster has been built up that way. The only hope they really have right now in it, in Impact, in my opinion right now, if they're going to bring somebody new in, they got to book them ultra strong. You got Zai Lee who just made her debut debut promo at the, uh, at the pay-per-view last night or the PLE, whatever you want to call it. Maybe that'd be a shot there. Maybe. And that's a real rough maybe. Serious though, looking forward to Danielson's last match. I, I'll be honest, Danielson's last match, I don't know how excited I'll be for it. Because the rumors right now are the fact that that Darby uh, Danielson match was delayed due to, due to the fact that they want to do that to Coma and that's what they want the, uh, the eventual retirement match to be. Because Danielson's always said he wanted to retire in in Washington by a Washington kid. And you're not going to give the title to Nick Wayne. That's the only other... The only other two options you have are Swerve Strickland and Nick Wayne. So, I don't know. Personally, in terms of... Wow. He usually does his, does the out and in and just couldn't do it today. He's just not focused enough. I love this. I love this storyline for Wheeler. That was rough. They could be building Ash by Elegance more, but it takes more time. And she has to be treated fairly by wrestling. What? It's a... I don't know. I don't think promotions honestly care what wrestling watchers really say and do about it. It's who's going to sell tickets and Ash's character more than anything else. I don't think she's brought anything that will sell any extra tickets for it. To me, that's the most frustrating part of it. Like I, I'm assuming that the next feud up for, uh, for Jordan's going to be a Rosemary, and that might actually be at Bound for Glory. Could you give the title to Rosemary? I guess. I would have to see a lot more in order to convince myself that that's the best pick. But I don't, I'll be honest, I don't even think there is a really good pick right now.
But yeah, just just looking over that roster, and even the tag team division isn't great. Like right now, it looks like they're going to be hot shotting that tag title between ABC and the system quite a bit. Granted, nobody's really booking their tag teams really well right now. Like, I think they're trying to do it at WWE with the bloodline. But on Raw, you don't see a whole lot dealt with with Judgment Day. They don't put the titles up that often. AEW, well, it's on the Jacksons. We've already discussed that to death. The ROH tag titles, we did see... Uh, I'm done with the bloodline doing anything. The one thing I want to see is more Jacob Fatu as part of that. As much as Solo was put into that position for where he has been, I think Ash has been a good heel character, but people have a distaste for him and good characters. I just don't know if that character is going to be able to sell tickets. Like, if you... Like, let's not kid ourselves. You could be a good good face, good heel. But if you're not going to sell tickets, you don't put the title on them. Unless you're going to get that title right away to somebody you will. And the biggest thing for me right now is when it comes to AEW as you come back from the picture in picture, the women's division used to be a hallmark. Like, Wrestler 1 through Wrestler 20, you could actually say was a credible threat for the title. Right now, maybe a few of them, maybe, maybe. And the the, uh, the knockouts division was always must-see TV. And it's just shameful it's been wheeled down the way that it is. And now Giselle's leaving which Giselle versus Athena is going to be 15 star worthy. Trust me. I've from my experience watching Giselle work a lot. That's going to be fun. My sub ended midstream and now I have to deal with. I'm sorry. I will say this though, no matter what, like, I know it isn't an ultimate benefit to me. Like, it, it helps a little bit, but sounds like. Uh oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna. Let's not. <laughs> Trying to reset. What I would recommend personally, I, I will still say this. Twitch Prime has been a godsend to me. That's why they're building Ashmore. Get I see. All right, if Ash gets it, and if she's that drawing card, I can. I'll, I'll give her all the credit in the world. And I, I just don't feel that she's. I don't think she was a draw as Dana Burke. I don't think this gimmick here. All right, Henry, you just pissed off the wrong wheeler. I could see a DQ coming. I, I never knew what to do with her. I don't take what WWE is a calling cover. I understand. That's the hardest thing right now for any promotion is finding a right way to use everybody.
What the hell? Yuna just doing a heel change right in front of us here? Uh-oh. <laughs> so now we're going cat mutilation. All right, that'll be it. Take a long breath, Wheeler. Maybe Darius' last match will be a pass to the torch match against Yuta. Well, it could be, but honestly, he, Danielson did say that he wanted to retire in, in Washington against somebody from Washington. That's why I think it's probably going to be Darby. I'm not going to like it, but it's probably going to be Darby. Because you know Tony Khan is just going to say what whatever you want, we're going to do. Like Danielson does have that freedom, I'm guessing. New Ash had wrestling skills, but the limited things they saw of her. But people blindly fall. Yeah, fair enough. Let's go, Oilers. Oh. Like, I'm with you guys. Like, I'm sorry. Deep, Deep's trying, but it almost feels like she's reading off a 10 card. O honestly, I, I, I almost feels like she's reading off a literal 10 card about what's, what's going on with everything here, so. Zodiac Darby's fun, but he's a novelty wrestler. I don't know if he can carry a brand. Would love, I would love to see him do it. I would love to see him try to do it. I would love to see Darby get the ball. I almost feel that we're going to get Darby winning the title at Wrestle Dream and Christian Cat cashing in just like the next Dynamite. I could almost see that happening right now because or, e or even if you go full gear with that but Darby winning the belt would be as if the Habs won the pandemic cup I will just yeah fans love Darby though like really they do I just don't think he's at the point of his career what he's I'm, I'm with Mox on this He's not ready yet. Maybe Mox, uh, the match against Mox sort of puts him there, but. Deem needs someone to help, help her learn so she can sound more natural. Yeah, like. I'm embarrassed with the fact that the Oilers fans did the Let's Do Oilers chant when uh, Deeb was talking about her, uh, about her problems and all her uh, medical issues. It's somewhat embarrassing, but it's I don't blame him. That's the worst part. She is absolutely skilled in the ring, and I think we all can agree on that. It's just, it, it's painful to watch her try to cut a promo and almost, 
like when you're doing a promo, the biggest thing about a promo is you want somebody to feel something about you, whether that be positive or negative. And if you're just doing it for the sake of doing it, you're a ring announcer. You're not a, you're not a wrestler doing a promo. Because frankly, to me, that's all you're really doing is just, you're, you're just talking. You're not speaking, I think is the best way to put it. Words are coming out, but they give no meaning. They give no life to. But uh, yeah, just I I would almost say that it, oh here we go. I love this footage of Anna J. Here from Stardom. I can't wait to see her back in the ring again in AEW. That time in Japan had to be so great for her. Darby's too much of a liability outside the ring to be the guy, it, in your opinion. Don't want your world champion ending up missing time because the guy is hurt doing a crazy stunt. That That's a very good point there too, Crowder. Like He is a very good PR machine. But also at the same time, he's a daredevil. So are we going to actually get this match tonight? That's the question. I'd laugh so hard if somebody comes out and wrecks this match. Um, uh-oh. Private party calling out the BCC. Maybe it's just me. But I think maybe Indiana Jones running into a pit of snakes might be safer than trying to call out the BCC the way they just did. We might have an open murder on Wednesday. Because you know Moxley's going to want to do something on Wednesday just to set up for... Never seen this Lord Crew before. I love how Commander just salutes as he goes. Uh oh. Oh, and here comes Commander once again. And he missed again. How do you miss that? Yeah, this is over.
I, I love that uh, TK actually had to uh, pipe in the gin and juice there for him. I got to mention TK in the... In the uh... All right, Mox, where are you? I expected Mox out there just to wipe the floor with him right there. So I am saying, I absolutely love the fact that we changed up the setup just a little bit here for tonight. Rang this off of, uh, rang this off my laptop or my uh, computer instead of on the uh, TV. You know, so do this outside of the show. Tony's just, Tony wants to yell bullshit right now. You could just tell Tony is just writhing there, just wanting to say bull. Oh, hello. This we need more of. This is insane watching these highlights here. Wow. Okay. Hopefully we get to hear from him next week. But you notice that the uh, crowd noise just died and then all of a sudden showed up. I can see sort of why you don't want to leave. You don't want to have the crowd pop about Nigel because he's supposed to be a bit of a heel in this case. Nigel was doing a good job explaining things to the mar I th Actually, RK, I'll correct you on one word there. Nigel was doing a good job of explaining things to the non-marks. The marks know what's going on here. That That's the biggest criticism a lot of people have of AEW, is the fact that they've already, they're booking to the sickos, as they call it, to the people that already know what's going on, the people that are in a deep dive with every wrestler on the AEW roster who know their ins and outs, their indies, their, uh, all their previous matches. And yeah, absolutely. Good job by AEW here putting this together. And they need to do more of this for people. Like any feud that isn't based on a current timeline needs a package like this and 
I, I just haven't seen enough of that. Because when I when I go and I listen to podcasts, people talking about AEW and talking about how there's no stories or there's very very little storytelling in AEW. I know that's different. A lot of people that are here tonight, you guys know that it's different. Guys and girls, sorry, my apologies. Know that it's different. And I still can't believe, sorry, just quickly off topic here. Sakazaki finishing a match. After breaking your leg. So the bell rings and Mariah May shows up. I think, watch out for Nigel. No, no, no. There are marks of other things that just want to grab onto something and whine about. Fair enough. Oh. All right, well, I guess we got... N Nigel's going to be st starstruck for the entire match here. Storytelling's more subtle and requires more studying. Yeah. Oh, trust me, uh, at RK, talking about how people just want to grab onto saying and whine about it. I really... Even when the, the announcement went down... I'm watching people complain about how eight about uh, Nigel getting a shot with shot at the title first of all, without any reason, rhyme or wanting. First of all, it's not on title. Second of all, there is so much history involved, and yes, this is exactly what you need to do. That can't hear my response because Bezo will. Look Where is it here? It requires people low attention spans to pay more attention. Yeah, like that's the one thing that AEW does. It, it rewards your fans that remain loyal and watch a lot. All right, you're back. All right, so. And I'm with you that uh, this AEW rewards its fans for watching uh, for watching on a concurrent basis to learn about more of this stuff, so. Wow. You hear what Mariah May just called, talked about Tony? Yuka's a fun rest. She is very, oh God. And the thing that Yuka's so small compared to everybody else, which is Sang Sang on the women's roster, and her gimmick, she's just somebody who likes going out there and having fun. That's one of the things that I enjoy the most about her, so. As we, uh, once again, hit another picture in picture here. Everybody, thank you for popping in here. I do appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to see what's going to happen. She's more believable than Rio with her own size. What did Mariah's say about Tony. She didn't say a whole lot, to be honest. 
Oh, it was not Tony Storm. It was Tony Schiavone. That uh, Tony Schiavone... Because Nigel McGuinness has come up on a list that... I forget which company put the list out. I don't don't think it's PWI. But uh, Tony... Uh, Nigel McGuinness was listed as the best color commentator right now. And Tony didn't even make the list. Yeah, Nigel said... I'd have to go back and find it. But uh, Mariah did mention it. That uh, Nigel is... I think it's part of the PWI release. It's not part of the 500. But I believe the month before, they did a lot of these other uh, lists for stuff like that. And... Because I know Veda Scott was talking about it. Let me... Uh, I'm going to quickly check... Which I know checking through Twitter is... Uh, bit of a pain but yeah they were talking about how okay so it is a PWI list so I wish I could get a copy of it down for you guys so here in order are the uh, list of the top 10 color commentators in wrestling right now, according to the PWI. Nigel's number one. Wade Barrett at number two. Caprice Coleman at number three. Matthew Redwold in TNA is four. Taz in five. McAfee in six. Bukati in seven. Hugo Savinovich from AAA in eight. Veda Scott from New Japan in nine. And Matt Menard for AEW in 10. And if you're not familiar, Matt Menard does Rampage. So Magic Mike is there, so it counts. It's an interesting list. Once again, I'm going to just repost that list left your house and walked into mine. Zodiac back at the, I, I'm glad to see that the Prime showed up. 30 months, always appreciated. Great seeing you here. Great, great to have everybody here. Once again, one more month of uh, no ads as we were talking about, as well as uh, added emotes, whatever you want to use them. Thank you once again. I know I tease you about, you know, Twitch Turbo and all that stuff, but I'm glad Prime fi fixed their stuff up, so. Why does Posey look like he really doesn't want to do anything? Twitch Turbo's Gravy, watch more than one channel. Oh, fair enough. I'm glad to see that I'm the only channel you watch. Oh! Why are you using JB Hater's finisher? Trapped arm clothesline, that's Jamie Hater's finisher. I also watch both. We're not a pro. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Oh, look out. By the way, congrats on you guys uh, settling up on the old YouTube as well. Oh, sliding clothesline. Congrats on uh, the uh, successful start of your uh, YouTube additions to your streams as multi-streaming. My God, I'm going to throw up here listening to Mariah talk about Nigel. 
Oh, Shane set it up. All right. I know I can set it up. I, I, I need to just grab, download the attachment for it. Yuka's got those bad legs, too, after that broken leg. This is their first match back, so... Oh, God. So, some of these jokes that Mariah's coming up with, they're cheese, but they're funny cheese. Mirror on, on your shoes. Please, please don't accuse an old man of perving like that. Please. I'm loving the fact that these women have get, been given time here tonight. Deep's going to try. Old men are allowed to perv their old. They've been through it. Okay, Jerry Lawler. Nice little snow plow there. Okay, there are limits. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know, old men are allowed to purr, but then there's Jerry Lawler, right? Okay, let's go, Yuka. Yuka beats Sarita. And the look on Mariah's face is absolutely hilarious. I, I I like the high energy of her entrance music. All right, so oh, there we go. Mariah with a little drive by. Million dollar form up. Shut up, Nigel. Wow. Well, I think we found the challenger for uh, Mariah in the meantime. So if you guys, uh, guys and girls, of course, uh, have you heard about uh, Tony Storm challenging uh, Mayu Watami for the IWGP Women's Championship in uh, New Japan? <laughs> I, I I love how Yuka's so subtle and naive there. Why why Mariah should be going down face to uh oh. Get your VHSs out. Love how she just handed it to her, yeah. No, I'm not following all the NGPW stuff, but it makes sense. Yeah, like, it's a good placeholder if she's not going to be in North America for a while. I'm actually really impressed how... Uh, 
Sorry, I'm just watching this and like. This is like if Jesse Ventura and, uh, well, that's another thing about Jesse Ventura right there. Jesse Ventura and uh, Hulk Hogan decide to get together for a little bit. So, not following all the NGP, yeah, yeah, like, Milo Otani having that championship match against Tony Storm is going to be an absolute breaker of the match. And yeah, the, the Outrunner shoot, no, I have not seen it yet. I can just imagine. Now that AEW is getting away from... Sorry about that. Once uh, AEW gets away from their uh, manually generated... Uh, or their AI generated uh, pictures for their t-shirts, they've been doing a lot better job, so. Meat spin, ha! <laughs> Give it that there. See, I'm being smart. I actually ran an ad during the, the actual ads over here, so. Um, but yeah, it. Now here's the question for you guys. Should they have ran the Outrunners for uh, Grand Slam against the Bucks? Or do you, uh, or is the choice of Osprey and uh, Fletcher, a.k.a. Ozzy Open, uh, the right choice for that? Really hope to give the Outrunners the title run, even if it's for a day. I think the Outrunners do get that run, but I just don't think now. You, you don't have them beat the Bucks. You don't even beat the Bucks because Bucks have limited days. And if you want to do it, give it to somebody who can win it right back right away. Outrunners need a build, not right yet, though. This is the beginning of it. Little promo here, little promo there. Just makes things work out right, right? So... Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you guys are on the same page about this. I am so glad that everybody here is having a great time tonight. We're going to get... It looks like we might actually get two women's matches back-to-back -back here tonight. We still got a women's match. We got a trios match. We got our main event. Let me just double-check the photo here. Yeah, we got the Bang Bang Game against Cage of Agony. We got Robin Renegade and uh, Queen Aminata. These relationships are good for AEW and other promotions. It is like the territory system. Go away for a while, come back, and there's a story for you. Well, Well, it looks, looks like actually that jetty might not be uh, much for the top flight anymore. Oh, here we go. Everybody's favorite entrance. I wonder how long this is going to go just because we have to get three matches in and frankly GYV versus FTR 
I really want to see that match, and I want to see him have some time. Unless it's going to be a complete washout. Okay, so that's that's where they're playing this off. I like this. Wow, okay. I like this. Gates open. All right, let's see what gear ca Cage has got tonight. Straight old Wolverine gear. I love it. Could you imagine how many promotions would have this? Just got home from work. You're exhausted. Hey, that's what work I'll do to you, Jay Quick. Hope you're doing well, and yeah, just... I hope work's treating you right. I know it's the first weekend and working weekend sucks, but you know, it, it's just a part of life now these days. I know personally, I'm just fin I finished up a 32 hour shift. I got another one of those on Monday, so. Man, I, I see that picture of Juice Robinson right there and I'm like, Juice Robinson, Tony Storm. There's got to be something to that. Then I got home and got to go back at 9 a.m. Hey, you know what? It's. I'd rather work a back to back than. Uh, Than having not having to work for four days and just getting a few hours, right? Just remember that first three months they're gonna push you, they're gonna do everything they can to, to see how much you're gonna break. Oh, here we go. I don't know if hit, I had Buddy Juice would make that much of a difference. But yeah, I missed a hell of a... It's been a great great night of wrestling here so far. Got, got a chance to see the Christopher Daniels back in action tonight. Yuka Sakazaki returning to the ring tonight and getting a victory over Serena Deeb. Apparently becoming the, the new uh, foil for Mariah May right now. Wheeler Yuta just yeah like they're talking though he's just a little bit off now we're just in the middle of a six person tag here just such a fun time tonight like I don't know if Yuta's unadopted or what's going on right now. Yuta walked out. But the thing is that you know, you'll know you notice in the match, if you go back and watch it, as soon as they mentioned Danielson in, in Bad Ill, uh, yeah, Henry was getting creamed after that. Sort of like a small switch was turned there, right? To the point where the referee almost got clipped there. Just back and forth. Yuda did not have the trios title with him. He almost, he said he forgot his boots with him. That's the kind of g gimmick they were playing there. Like he just pretty much forgot everything. Ah, the Superman superplex. It's been a while since you've seen that. Well, 
the craziest thing I think I've seen tonight overall would have to be private party calling out the BCC because of what happened last uh, last Wednesday when they interrupted uh, private party's match. They actually told them we're looking for a fight. I'm like, uh, this might not be the best situation for you. Make a lot more sense, you know, if you want to survive, live, breathe. I really appreciate these gates of agony. Just the tag team themselves. It's like we have our own version of the bloodline here, so I know Zodiac loves these guys. Just thought I'd, you know, I guess I should put that there just to be safe. Because everybody knows I'm kidding here. No, it's going to be interesting to see how they put things together on uh, Wednesday for Dynamite here. Getting ready for Grand Slam next week. Because they, I think they still have one more hold of it. It's probably going to be Mariah and Yuka. Because they have built absolutely nothing for Mercedes right now. And for those that are asking, Swerve's asked for time off. MJF and Britt Baker are both filming movies now. So that's essentially why I haven't heard from any of the three of them. Because I know a lot of people are like, well, where's Britt? Where's Britt after that horrible match? She's not coming back, is she? I'm like, she's going to film a movie. And then... Uh, well, when you have uh, MJF also getting a small part in the movie too, so he's got to be available. Samoa Joe's in a movie right now. He's or he's filming. Uh, Was it season two of Twisted Metal? They're in the middle of filming that right now, so he's out. And apparently, Swerve just needed some time to be Swerve for a little bit. I do like how Swerve has basically gone on X just to say, you know, you guys did exactly what you thought we'd, you'd do. The people that are loyal, the people that enjoy the product, pe people understand how great and how serious that match was. Those that didn't understand, well, they're just going to crap all over it. And I understand there's levels to that stuff, but at the same time, I think that level of violence is warranted. Like, you guys know me. I'm not a big fan of it. But I will say, when there is a good story involved, I don't mind it as much. Oh, here we go. We're back. For those that are popping in here late, I'm actually using my uh, monitor instead of my, uh, instead of my Roku app, so things are working well. Thunder Rosa has a concussion. Oh, that sucks. I didn't know that, but that's another one that's, yeah. She's just had nothing but bad luck when it comes to injury, too. And then that storyline that just looked awkward with uh, Deanna Perrazzo. Wow, a little European sidestep there. I believe that's a Euro step is the right way to put it. When you club a... When you club to Toa Leona or the back of the head like that, would that absolutely do nothing the way his head's supposed to be? I guess not. Nice reversal of the suplex. Colton's doing some work here.
Shoulders up anyway. Uh oh, little pounce action here. Banner, 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 dan, dan it. Austin comes flying in. Oh. All right, now turn it into a double DET. That's pretty cool. I love how Juice can just yell louder than anybody else in the arena. Juice Robinson, Mr. Hot Dog himself. Juice, juice, juice. Oh, tried to set out DET there. Oh, God. Juice just got destroyed. Reverse that five. It's no flatliner. I love how they make Brad Cage look like an absolute beast. Because, well, frankly, he is. All right, well, that was weird. I love how Cage just literally gets back up to his feet just because he knows he got to eat the DDT. It's like uh, when you watch the Royal Rumble and, you know, a stunner normally lands somebody on their back. Well, in the Royal Rumble, when you hit a stunner, everybody stands up staggering by the ropes. I wonder if these guys will get... I assume they're going to get a trio shot sooner than later. But we don't even know what's going to happen with those titles right now. Last time this happened, Daniels boycotted them. Wow. I love that. So Queen Almanada just comes out and shows off right there. If you were, if you were around earlier here, uh, Serena Deeb asked for a, an interview with uh, Queen Almanada. Just to say, look, I can teach you how to be a better wrestler. And Queen Amina just said, to hell with you, no. Good to see Robin get the already in the ring uh, presence here. I'd assume we were going to get a late one here. All right, I I expect this maybe to go five minutes. I don't see much more than that. TNT usually runs it pretty tight. So we haven't had a chance to talk about it really since uh, it happened. 
will the fact that Raw is now fit going to two hours starting on Canadian Thanksgiving, October 7th, is it going to change your mind about watching it more? Since it's going to be a little more compact and... Apparently, they're going to go to about two and a half hours on Netflix. So we're going to get it for about three months here. Because Netflix has said that they're going to... They expect an average Raw to go about two and a half hours. And the, com and the uh, commercials will be more customized. So, like, you're not going to have mid-match uh, commercials for the most part. I'm an out of just saying nope. To the back of the head, her face got in the way. I love Nigel so much. Yes, going to two hours is easy, Dub. Through our rise, we've such a grind. Even the product is better like it has been the last year. Yeah. Yeah, I will say this. Odds are, if I'm going to be running Monday streams, they will start at 10 Eastern. Because uh, you can watch Raw and then you can pop on the stream for a little bit. I I don't want to... I, I find that a, streaming during Raw does affect my numbers personally. I Let's face it, streaming isn't about numbers, but at the same time, you like to have people to talk to when you're there, right? So, that hurt. That was a stiff DDT. I watch Raw already. We'll see what they do with it. They're in need of transition between matches. So, we'll see what kind of ads there are. Yeah, they, they say they're probably going to concentrate their commercials more in between matches when they move to Netflix. Three hour Raws are just a dream. Super happy with two hours. Yeah. I, I think it's one of the biggest wins that they've had. And one of the biggest disappointments that they've had is. Queen Almanada wins with a headbutt. Oh, she called the brain drain. Okay. Oh, uh, here comes Serena. Well, we got a new feud. I'll give AEW credit. We got a new feud. And WWE is more profitable than it ever has been. So losing that hour of sponsorship money won't hurt so bad. At least I'd come home, finish watching Raw, and have a shower before prime time. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're on the West Coast, so for us, it's perfect. It's 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. here in my zone. I will still say the Western time zone is the best one to watch sports in. Early games are at 5, late games are at 8. Like right now, it's 20 to 8. So we're going to be done the WWE stream by 10 o'clock. But yeah, I'm the happiest. Guy. And I'll be frank when it comes to USA. I think they they intentionally did this. I want to see what's on that third hour. If it's something important in that third hour, I think there, there's a reason behind it, right? Oh, it's just a generic com commercial for Dynamite here. But I think, I think USA just turned around and said, hey, We'll sign you up for the last three months here so you're not dead until you get over to Netflix, but we want that last hour back. 
We want that last hour. We got something to present here the last hour. We're not going to pay you as much. And once again, we were talking about payment. Uh, there's a potential that AEW could end up on Fox replacing SmackDown. With the fact that basically Fox has said in no uncertain terms, WWE priced himself off the channel. Because they said they could make money off it, but they can't make money with the payout that WWE wanted. Now, AEW is not going to ask for as much. So, I could see a syndicated show, if not a a legit, a complete separate show available there. So, it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of it. But, as we are getting to our main event, once again, we, as per tradition, i got to give you a rundown of what's coming up here. Uh, tonight, after we're done here, about a five-minute break, we're going to... Uh, we're going to get into WWE 2K24 My GM mode as we get ready. Yeah, Shockwave was trademarked. Whether it be a syndicated show or be an actual new show, we'll see. Yeah, the last thing AEW needs right now is a Rampage like show. I think I, I, I'll get back to my lineup here in one second here, but uh, I do think that the Fox show is going to be something like... Uh, not not exactly a this week in wrestling, but something sort of like that, where you show the best matches from the week on there and tell everybody that you know you get check out AEW on our sister stations and whatnot. Because Fox and TBS are like, I I don't think they're on the same page, but at the same time, money will help all that stuff. So. But yeah, we're going to be into WWE 2K24 My GM mode here after the stream is done, or after this half of the stream is done. Tomorrow night, I uh, will be back on here trying to get a chunk of Astrobot done here. We are having so much fun the last time that uh, we're going to go back and see if we can uh, get a good portion of it done, if not the whole thing. My goal is to have it done by the 26th, but we'll see how that works. We're going to have some time for some extra streams coming up that week, but uh, no stream Monday because I'm working another 32 hour shift again. Tuesday, if I'm not completely burnt out, we're going to get back into the uh, Marvel versus Capcom collection. I've heard about the horrors of the online and the waiting times and whatnot. Hopefully they have it fixed by then. <laughs> so everybody that's called out the house of black they're like yeah we'll take you all on that's fun You know, I, as as long as we get FTR some new challenges and not run the same people all the time, like don't run the box all the time, I actually don't mind watching them. Like tonight's match is going to be absolutely spectacular, I think. So now we're getting... Oh, this is going to be a lot of fun. So did you guys see how... Uh, did you see how the, the Dark Order have said that they were the next team up? So by rule, they should be getting a title shot. Look, if we learned anything from WWE, is that you have people, people face each other for years? That's only in GM mode. 
See, I've done my best in this GM mode not to have that happen. But sometimes you just got to let it ride. I love those jerseys, by the way. Cody's been few. Let me throw this out here to you, Zodiac, on that. Cody fighting the bloodline would not be as bad if Solo was ready. If it would have been Jacob Fatu instead, I think it would have been a lot more entertaining match. Because Jacob Fatu looks a hell of a lot closer to being at that level that he needs to be to be a real leader, to be the top wrestler in a company than Solo does. I have no doubt that Solo's got the ability in him to get there in the future, but for right now, He's getting out. Even when Solo's groveling to him, you're still seeing uh, you're still seeing Solo being outshined by uh, all the greatest hits here. Let's go. I can tell you this is what hell of a main event they picked out for this week. And these are both traditional type teams too, so. This is that match where if everybody likes wrestling, this is this is quote unquote for the sickos here, right? They got to realize, GYV got to realize, you know, even if you're brawling with them. Old school wrestling, yeah, people fighting each other for a long time. Doesn't make sense to move away from feuds right away. Here's the thing when it comes to that. Old school wrestling has that set up, but that also had... Uh, sorry, I just watched the CFL game going into overtime. But uh, you're watching you're watching one match out of five, maybe one match out of six in the old school wrestling because you do the same match in town A, town B, town C, town D. There be no cameras. There be no there there be some photos, but there are no cameras around. There ha sure as hell was no internet around. So you could do the same exact match five, six, seven times in a row. Gibson ain't that clothesline and then some. Oh, here we go. Hi, backdrop driver. No, I, uh, I appreciate old school booking. I appreciate old, old school storytelling, but at the same time, there has to be a little bit of a speed up and a little bit of modernization for it. And the one thing I find that is one of the biggest issues in my opinion is when it comes to old school booking you book the exact same match all the time have some variation ha throw some tag matches in even if you got to throw them out for some dqs 
Throw in some run-ins. Throw in, like, all that stuff. Real-life feuds don't end right away unless more sensible people are involved who know how to communicate. Fair enough. That actually is a very good point. I'll give you a gold star for the, that one. Because you're, you're bang on, RK. I, I just find that, you know, in many times you have other people involved. You get uh, mediators. You get... You get people backing you up and whatnot. So I see where you're going, but I'm going to raise you that the circumstances aren't always the same between two people. Sometimes it is just two people wanting to beat the shit out of each other every time. Pardon my French. Or pardon my language, I guess. It's 2024. I never know what the right word is now these days. But, uh... <laughs> Sorry, just watching uh, Gibson there. He he grabbed both legs to look like he was going to make a, a leg lock or a boot to the chest. Switched right over the headlock, so. But yeah, I can totally see where you're going with that. I just, I think people use wrestling as an escape from uh, reality, not, not trying to remind themselves of it. Three to six months is great years though. For me, gets a bit stale. Always fun to revisit, but it needs to breathe. See, hey man, swerve. Yeah, they did it over a year and... One thing about AEW, and a lot of people don't give them enough credit, AEW has a way of just letting everything breathe to another level. And long-term storytelling there is absolutely insane. Very nice work from GYV there. Like, here's another one. Hangman and uh, Omega. That took forever, and it worked out really well. Dax trying to get that tag, but it just ain't working. Oh, and there's a double down out of nowhere. Also, why I wish AEW stuck to quarterly pay-per-views. I get it. People need to stop complaining about what makes sense or not. Then they're trying to skip... That if they're... Fair enough, I get it. It's it's one of those cases where you're never going to win no matter what. X wants this, Y wants that, Z wants this, A wants this, and B wants... B wants free tickets. So I, I get it completely. Wheeler with the Tabasco tag... Gosh, we were just going to town here right now. It looks... Wheeler's power slam looks really weird, but it just works. And that's why it looks weird, because it's so easy to reverse. We know I've got about five more minutes here, so...
I love how Cash actually tapped the chest because he thought he was going to break it that way. Drake didn't move, so he went up. Oh, that was perfect. Gonna go for the little high-low action. Really? I was gonna say, you're actually gonna try and use a small cradle for that? These guys are trying. That's it. I like this nice little finish here. I don't think FTR should be over at the Bucks for a while now. I think GYV has to win this. First collision match. Nice. Oh, this is going to suck. I've seen this. No way. Wow. I didn't think they give JYV the loss there. Oh, okay. At least they're getting the heat back for attacking after the bell. Nice shot to the throat by Gibson there. Nice little high low. No way. The Outrunners with the save? Are we getting Outrunners at GYV? Let's go. Wow. All right, I love this. Well, SRS did report that that, uh, that pop that they got during the gauntlet was just absolutely insane. Oh, the Mega Powers handshake. Here we go. Are we going to get it? And Cash is like, no, nah, I don't think I don't think we should do that. There you go. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. Uh, that is a hell of a way to finish up here. All, all the credit of the world here. Sorry that I'm a little behind you here as Shettles were. They're just the way Twitch is and between Twitch and the. Aminata and Sakazaki against Bay and Deep. That's going to be a lot of fun. And then they got that all-star trios match. So we're getting the... I love FTR. FTR just gets it in so many ways. I know people piss on them because uh, their friend's a punk, but... 
Yeah, fair enough, RK. I appreciate that. I actually, when I watch some of my favorite streamers, I have that same problem where I have certain people uh, ahead of me when I'm, uh, or sorry, I'm ahead of certain people. So I'm looking for the reaction that's coming on certain stuff. I, I, I have to say tonight was actually a really fun show to watch. It was, I'd have to say one, one of the most uh, entertaining matches that we, that a JYV match is an entertaining collision. One of the most entertaining collisions we've seen since the midsummer, like back when they were in Calgary and that, and some of the bigger tag matches they've had. Just, yeah, overall the card, like they are developing some stories. They got the Almanada story with uh, Deeb now. They're getting Sakazaki and Mariah May. But you notice I said something on Wednesday that makes a lot of sense, and we're actually seeing it here. You got the TNT title, and you got the AEW women's title. So the top women's title and essentially the second men's title on the, uh, on the collision side, while you have the TBS title, and the AW World title on the Dynamite side. So it's a little bit of even Steven for everyone, right? So, so it's, I'm glad to see that we get uh, a little bit of balance here. I do know that there's a lot more uh, titles over there on the other side with the International, the Continental Cup. and It's slowly working its way to where it needs to be, so... All in all tonight, like I said, story progression was made. Some good matches were had. We're getting a couple, a very good promo on Nigel McGuinness for anybody that even doubts why this match is happening at Grand Slam. If anybody's asking why it's going to be uh, McGuinness versus Danielson in New York, show them that video. Just show them that video. That's what you got to see. But yeah, it's uh, I I'm looking forward to Wednesday and seeing all those great matches that are coming up here. Jer even Jericho and Ca Cassie should be good. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Call this a sucker, right? Yeah. Come on, boys. Let's take up to school. Oi! 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 Turnbuckle Studios, how the hell are you doing tonight? Were you watching... Uh, were you watching Collision as well, or are you guys just running your uh, your own stuff tonight, Carl? Or there's a shout out there. If you uh, haven't followed Turnbuckle Studios, a lot of great wrestling content there. Uh, one in particular, they do do a watch along. Do do a uh, a watch along of uh, Monday Night Raw which is going to be a lot easier for them now in a few weeks when uh, things go down to two hours for the rest of the year. Just great stuff. Go give a follow to uh, Carl and the friends over at uh, Turnbuckle there. So, But yeah, odds on, odds on if Nigel will cry after the match, guaranteed. I feel that that's going to be his retirement match. and when it, You couldn't get it at Wembley, so they're going to do it at Grand Slam. It, it makes the most sense to do it that way. So I, I do feel that that's probably your most likely scenario when it comes to when it comes with Nigel and just all the good feelings that are coming out of this. Like I know people talk about the shock factor more than anything when it comes to AEW right now and all the crazy things they do. But if you sit down and watch it, it's actually some pretty damn good wrestling here. So. Just going to snooze that for a little bit here as we're going to head to the break here in just a moment here. Um, other than that, like I said, we got stories developing. We got promos that are putting over feuds. We got Jack Perry with another win over Christopher Daniels, which I don't think anybody had any background on why we had it, other than the fact that Christopher Daniels can make whatever match he wants right now. I'm glad to see uh, Daniels is able to get back in the ring here. 
Uh, yeah, the Bang Bang Gang getting themselves lined up once again to see if they can do the trios. Wheeler, the storytelling of Wheeler right now, absolutely fantastic. With the fact that he, he's just basically falling apart right now. He's having to learn how to get things back together after what happened at, at uh, Chicago there. And the fact that he's not wearing the BCC outfit, he's wearing an AEW outfit. I, I know RK, we were talking about it a little bit, too, whether he's out of the group, in the group, whatever. I don't know if he's fully out, but he definitely is taking some time away right now. And makes you wonder what's going to happen with those trios titles. Are we going to get another champion that just has to fold and we get a new set of uh, challengers coming up like we did with uh, when Jay White went out injured. We'll see. We got multiple possibilities here and a lot of things going on, but. (laughs) 